In this video, let's start a new chapter of our class and 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 the title of this is bounds. So, so before I give you and we well we talk about the mathematical uh, the, the definition of bounds, you can even think about this as as logically as well from your life experiences, you probably know that a bound is is a limit well don't don't confuse it with the calculus limit that's not what i'm talking about that you know if you are bounded by something you are being you know you you want to do something but you are bounded by another thing that that thing that's bounding you is basically stopping you so so if if you if 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 uh, uh, we 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 normally say that if we have this amount of area let's say it's an island and and then there are people living living on on this then the land is bounded by all this ocean to be uh, accurate let's let's draw <laughs> ocean well i'm not i'm i'm not, i i can't really do justice to to the drawing i'm sorry for the bad drawing but i hope you're understanding this it's it's all for you to understand bounds better so if you are living on an island then then you can think about bounds as you know that you are bounded by this ocean you cannot escape this because the ocean bounds you it doesn't matter if you talk about the water that's over here and because there's still water over here there's you know the the the, the ocean doesn't just conclude here there will be there will be uh, water here there will be water here there will be water everywhere just assume you are on an island where except for where you are everywhere else you are basically bounded by by this huge ocean so so if you want to think about it in mathematical terms well we can call your island a set think about the island as your set and think about as you as an element you are the element you are any given element so if i was to ask you what what's bounding you then you would say well this initial sort of water is bounding me bounding me from 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 walking walking in this area the water is preventing me from you know interacting with the with the, with the, with the space uh, around and outside of the island because there's water there i can't go there unless i have some sort of ship or some sort of ferry or some sort of boat so and and another crucial idea that i want to you know you know you to learn through through this example is that if the water is bounding the island here then it doesn't matter whether or not you know though the water is this small or, or or you can see the water all the way until here if 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 we say that everywhere else if everywhere else we know that you know the the, the the island is surrounded by ocean then the ocean will be present here as well this is very similar to what i will be teaching you about bounds if something is bounded nearby nearby the set then it doesn't matter how far we need to go to it will still be bounded so if if we can somehow so if if we can find if we can find one one evidence of of some sort of bounding one evidence of bounding then bounding then there exists so uh, the, the, the the flipped e means there exists there exists infinite amount of other of of other things that would bound it things that bound as well that bound so you might be confused or if you have some knowledge and you are watching my video to further understand this then what i'm basically telling you is that if you give me a set then i can somehow find so find some sort of bound that that would you know be greater than or equal to every element in your set now before i actually define it properly remember that our goal is to capture the real numbers so we we spent a little bit of time on the naturals with piano's number and then we have been spending some time with inequalities and intervals and 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 we what we found out is that the reals are an ordered field 
So our goal is to basically, in, the, in this course, is to differentiate uh, between the reals and every other set. What, why are the reals different than every other set? And why is it that we, that, that, that you are taught mathematics in the real number system from grade one? And the reason is because the reals are a very special number system. And it's not because, um, you know, some specific, uh, well, actually, it is because of some specific thing. It's, a, it's exactly one axiom that, that, you know, differentiates the reals between any other, any other set. And the, the reals are truly unique. There is no other number system like uh, the real numbers. So with with our journey here in in this series we are almost there the reals as i said before are an ordered field so we took the 12 axioms to define an ordered field the nine axioms that define a field as a quick quick review the nine axioms defining a field are uh, additive uh, commutativity additive associativity additive neutral and additive inverse and we have multiplicative uh, the commutativity multiplicative associativity multiplicative neutral multiplicative inverse and the last one uh, is is distributivity so those were the nine field axioms and if you don't know what i'm talking about then you might want to go back and 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 watch a video and my video covering the field axioms on it now the the the, the ordered field axioms were uh, ordered addition ordered uh, multiplication and ordered trichotomy and we only had three so these 12, 12 make up an ordered field. So, so we took 12 axioms to define an ordered field. The reals are an ordered field, but so are the rational numbers. So, so what, what, and, and, and the field of rational functions, uh, you know, is almost, well, somebody could argue, why do we worry about reals? Why don't we just, you know, focus on, on the rationals? So what is it that distinguishes, uh, what's the distinguishing factor between the rational number system and the real number system? To do this, we will need to learn about bounds. And that's exactly what I said. So, so let me give you, let me give you the proper definition. Let me give you the proper definition of bounds. So let F, so, so let F, let F B an ordered field an ordered field and just like for ordered uh, ordered fields let me define uh, a subset let's call it s which is a subset of the field so that this so let this be any set of numbers in F so the S is supposed to show any. So this is any set within within our field. So by an upper bound. So I'm I'm just going to move forward with defining what an upper bound is. So what is an upper bound? An upper bound an upper bound is what? So by an upper bound for S, for S, for S, we mean any any number. Any number, let's call it U, so that, so, so let U be in, in, in the field. Then U, U is greater than or equal to any element any element in s so if we if we think about some sort of number line and we say that we we will have a set that starts here and it ends here let's call this s then it s will have you know infinite amount of elements inside of it or or it could be just you know finite it doesn't necessarily matter but an upper bound any upper bound will be something that's outside or if you want to think in terms of the number line on the right side on the right side of of our set this will be an upper bound because it's greater than everything inside this set now this will also be an upper bound because look it says it could be equal to the greatest element in in s so 
So if if I if I wanted to define what what s is, then then I would say s such that u is greater than or equal to x for all x which are elements in the set. Okay? So we are trying to define what 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 an upper bound is. So similarly similarly, if I were to tell you what a lower bound is, a lower bound a lower bound for s for s will be so let so let l be an element of the field then l will be less than or equal to any element any element in s so in terms of the number line i could take so your l could be something like this and it will be less than right it will be less than every single element that lives within your set s now if if the, the element right on the tip if if we were to choose this this would this would be a lower bound as well because look it says equal to so the lowest one uh, could be the lowest element in your set could be the lower bound but it doesn't necessarily need to be a lower bound what if there's a hole there so you can't have that so what I'm basically trying to tell you is that you could have an upper bound which 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 is on the outside on the right side of the set and we would call that an upper bound we call that element that you we call that an upper bound and if an L existed on the left side so which was you know less than any element that you give me in 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 your set so let me actually define it so so s so that so that l is less than or equal to x for all x which are elements of s then l will be called the lower bound so it's very important for you to understand this and if in the analogy that i was giving here before what i was basically trying to say is that you could have a population of people living here population of people living here and all these are your elements the island is your set and if we if we think of you know the, 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 this right side as the front side and the back side so the left side as the back side anything in front will be an upper bound because it will be you know bounding it from above it, it will be bounding it from above and one thing that's important to notice that is that if you have one upper bound then then you could get another one if if you can find one upper bound then there exists infinite upper bounds and similarly if you were to find something on the back of the island we would call that the lower the lower bound lower bound because it's 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 in it's behind the island if this analogy is confusing you then don't listen to me just look look at the definition then let's just focus on the definition the analogy is just supposed to make it easier for you to understand it and if it's and, and if it's confusing you then you don't need to then you don't need to do, do you, you don't need to worry about it so so an upper bound is basically some element that is greater than every single element in s and a lower bound is some sort of number or element which is less than or equal to any element that you give me so i noticed that i put two e's here so let me get rid of that one e now before i end the video let me let me introduce some other special uh the, the terminology so that so that you we can end this video on a on a happier note so a set doesn't necessarily have to have an upper bound right or or or, or it doesn't necessarily have to have a lower bound if s has one upper bound then as i said before it will have infinitely many upper bounds so if something if so this is important if there exists at at least at least one upper bound so i'm going to use u dot b upper bound then we call we call the set s upper so or actually let me write it like this bounded bounded above we call it bounded above so similarly if there exists at least one at least one lower bound then we call we call s bounded below bounded 
below. So if S, you know, you know, is bounded above and below. So if you can find some L which is less than uh, any element in the set, and you can find some some U which is greater than every single element in the set, then so let me let me let me rewrite this to be clear. So if there exists at least one upper upper bound upper bound upper bound then we call it then we call s is bounded bounded above and then if if there exists at least one lower bound lower bound then we call s bounded below bounded below and if something is both bounded above so if something was bounded above and bounded below then we call s then we call s is bounded then we say s is bounded so just so you are not confused, an upper bound is an element, okay? An upper bound is an element, and I gave it the, the letter U. And a lower bound is also an element, and I gave it the letter L. Bound, being, being bounded above is a, is, is a quality is a quality and it's a description of of a set you cannot have some element that's bounded above you have to have a set that is bounded above similarly bounded below is a quality it's an adjective it's describing s so it's a quality so if you can find some element which is less than or equal to uh, any any element of your set s then we will say that well th that set is bounded below now if some you can find an element which is greater than or equal to any element in your set s then we say that's bounded above if something is bounded above and so and it's bounded uh, below then so both so bounded above plus bounded below then we say s is bounded i hope this video was helpful